this seventh day of February, in the year of our Lord, 2012, in the era of Obama. I uh, am not political here because I know we're not supposed to be, but you know, I just love being able to say that. I just love it. In the interest of time, let me say I will not recognize all the dignitaries. I pay special honor to the 18th president of this magnificent university, Dr. Christopher Brown II, who invited me in front of my mama to make sure that I would be here Broken foot and all, no, I did not come off the bench and kick somebody. I slipped down a flight of steps. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. In all seriousness, I would not let this impede me getting here today. For what is the first heritage convocation at Alcorn State University? And I am honored, and I mean that sincerely. I am so honored, and so to the president, to the trustees, to the faculty, the administrators, students, to all of you who have gathered here in this historic chapel on this occasion. I am honored to be here. I will warn you that this will not be a scholarly speech this morning, Mrs. Evers. It's not. It's going to be a message from my soul. Because I know that I stand on the foundation of what is rich heritage. I know that we stand here today at a place where it has been a university a college that was originally chartered to educate black men. Then, of course, the sisters came along. Some years later, not too long later. And that this is a place that is historic for so many reasons. It is the first land-grant university of its kind, not just in Mississippi, but any place in this nation. It is the oldest black college and university in the entire state of Mississippi. And it is the second, hear me clearly, second oldest institution of learning anywhere in the state of Mississippi. We're talking about Alcorn State University because really we have to know and appreciate and celebrate the rich heritage. Founded in 1871, a place, as I said, where it was first actually another college was here and then it became Alcorn named after then the Mississippi governor. Oh, little did that old Mississippi governor know. What would happen in this institution? Now standing at close to 3,700 undergraduates and more than 700 graduate students, your ranks of alumni stretch and span this globe. 48 states, count them, five countries, 17,000 strong, 1,200 and 500 of you all are right here in the state of Mississippi. But I will tell you, this rich heritage has produced servant leaders and scholars. We're talking about in the person of a Mega Evers and a Alex Haley, who were classmates and graduated in the class of 1948. I mean, can you imagine that the world couldn't have possibly known when they sat here in this chapel as students and back in the days when they matriculated on this campus that the world would get a servant leader in the form of Megger and a 
and a scholar and the one who has taught us about the rich roots of our past in the form of a person of Alex Haley. And we have so much to celebrate. We have activists and art actors and athletes who are among the ranks of those who have come through Alcorn State University activists in the form of a Mrs. Marilee Beasley Evers. You know, she met him. Oh, I got to tell you a story. She met him her first week on campus. I said, but Mrs. Evers, did you know? She said, Glenda, I was 17. What did I know at 17? But clearly she found out. An activist in her own right who went on to lead the NAACP and, of course, an athlete like Steve McNair and then Coach um, Kasman, who I know is the coach here for a number of years, and actors like Michael Clark Duncan, and the list goes on and on. And so among you, among the graduates who have come and here and have gone to touch the world, we have lawyers. We have um, agriculturalists, accountants. We have scientists. We have sociologists. We have musicians. We have ministers. We have people who have made a difference. And so my message is fairly simple this morning. It's a challenge. It's a challenge, and I want to just, in the brief time that I have, and you know, it's risky when you invite a black woman who's trained as a lawyer, who's a black Baptist on top of it, we can't say good morning in 20 minutes. <laughs> but I'm going to be respectful of the time. I've come to challenge you this morning. I've come to challenge you and me to ask this question if we're standing on this foundation of rich heritage, Dr. Brown. If we're standing here boldly proclaiming who we are, then what are we prepared to do that when we're gone, we'll still touch the world? Do I need to run that again? What are we prepared to do here and now that will live on beyond our lifetimes? And so I dare you. As a kid, people get in your face, I double dare you. Got really intense, I double dog dare you. What are we prepared to do, particularly in times like this? So given the rich heritage, what are we prepared to do to build on that? And so I want to remind us, particularly as we celebrate black history, and I tell white audiences that black history is not uniquely for us, but it is a history that all of us should embrace. So I'm going to refer to you, my brothers and sisters, all of you, and I mean brothers and sisters this morning without regard to race or culture or religion, I don't care where you came from. We are all brothers and sisters in this marvelous journey called life. And so the challenge, as you contemplate that, I want to remind you that the same blood that runs through your veins has run through the veins of kings and queens as well as slaves. It is the same blood that has run through the veins of Mega and Martin and Malcolm and Mandela. It is the same blood. And so we have to be very clear that any time any of us suffers, any time any of that blood runs in the streets, that we lose a part of us. The Justice Department and the study Dr. Brown 
said that for every black male that was born in the year 2001, that one in three would spend some time of his lifetime in jail. That's what the Justice Department said, Pastor. That's what they said, but I've come here to tell you this morning, Mrs. Evers, that that may be the prediction, but that will not be our reality because we're standing. We're standing on a promise that we're better than that. And so, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You are here not on your own might. You are here by God's grace and his mercy. And you are here because generations sacrificed for you to be in this place, my young brothers and sisters. See, I am clear. I don't get it twisted. See, millions of folk may watch me on TV, but I know that I am here and I stand here because of God's grace and mercy and because I had a mom and daddy who prayed for me when I didn't have enough sense to pray for myself. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. See, I know that I had parents who the only way they got through college was Distra- 
distracted by the no good trifling. I got to go there. And you said nothing. You're a part of the solution. You know them. You can go back and touch them. It's not too late. You can encourage them. There's a sixth grade boy right now who needs to see young African American men. He needs to see you. He needs to see your heart and he needs to believe that he too can be at this university. You gotta touch him. You gotta pour into him. You gotta tell him he belongs to you because he does. You are not your brothers and sisters keepers. You are your brothers and your sisters. <laughs> you gotta embrace him. I'm going too long, aren't I? Oh my gosh. And so, the challenge is, what are you gonna do that will live that will live beyond your lifetime. And so I want you to figure it out. The world awaits your gifts. The world awaits what you're going to bring and put on the community table. What is going to be the next generation? What is going to be the next chapter of this magnificent story? You're called on to do what you can where you can and when you can. And so I'm a storyteller, so I have to tell a story. I need a handkerchief. I need a man's handkerchief. Oh, purple here. <laughs> Mine's a little bit bigger. This, this one's a little bit bigger. The <laughs> Sunday, Dr. Brown. I got a lot more to say, but I'm really trying to be respectful of the time. My church, my home church in Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, let me tell you, these women were on my plane last night. They said, Judge, we're coming to Alcorn to hear you speak. I said, you what? <laughs> they are members of the alumni chapter in Atlanta, Georgia. They were on the plane. We had a party on the plane. She said, Judge, you know these people. I said, oh, honey, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we on a roll. We going to Alcorn tomorrow, honey. Too bad you can't be with us. We got some stuff going on. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, they are. Let me, my mother, I can't go home without saying something to you. Where are you? Mr. and Mrs. Jones, are you all here? OK, y'all tell my mama I did acknowledge them. Oh, there they are. They are friends of Juanita Dickerson, my mother's friend. Anyway, okay, so. Don't fall, break the other foot. <laughs> All right, before I get serious, y'all see my boot? I've been in this boot for 11 weeks. Broke my foot, as I told you. But I had this decorated because I knew I was coming to see Dr. Brown, and I had to step up my game. <laughs> I was not coming to Alcorn with that ugly boot. 